Okay, welcome back to Everyday Workshop. And what I have behind me is my 1953 GMC pickup that we will be doing a nut and bolt restoration on right here on the channel. Actually, probably as soon as this video is over. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk about the 12 volt conversion that I've already done on this truck. I did a little while ago and I put about 1500 miles on it since and it's been working flawlessly. Now I have talked to some people that seem a bit intimidated with doing the 6 volt to 12 volt conversions on these trucks, which would be the 1947 to 1955 first series. And that's totally understandable because I was pretty intimidated when I first got into it. But hopefully this video helps those realize that it's actually incredibly easy. I'm going to go through all the stuff we're going to need. And the best of all, we'll be able to use our original, original wiring harness. All right, let's get started. Okay, guys, before I take you over to the truck and I walk you through the 12-volt conversion that I've already done on it, I wanted to go over the stuff that you're going to need to be able to get it done for yourselves. First and foremost, we're going to need a 12-volt battery. Second, new battery cables. It's always a good idea, especially if they're old and corroded. Also, for the GMC guys who have a 6-volt positive ground system, now that we're switching to a 12-volt negative ground system, you're going to need new battery cables to be properly color-coordinated and make sure everything is where it needs to be. Three, a one-wire alternator. That's what we're going to be using for this conversion. If you are going to use an externally regulated alternator, I'm going to include this step-by-step how-to guide. Now, this is actually just generic way of doing it for most classic cars. Vintage Auto Garage has this, and I'll put a link in the description. But it'll help you, and it does give a little section on how to do that. Four, we're going to need a 10-gauge wire. I'll go into that a little bit later. Five, a fuse for the alternator. Now, it is always a good idea to fuse the alternator, especially with these higher amp alternators, and it'll help protect the um, electrical system. Six, you're going to need a 12-volt to 6-volt voltage reducer, which is exactly what this is looks like this and here's the part number and this is also from vintage auto garage but you can get these from numerous sources I even think that Amazon has them but you're gonna need this for your gas gauge your radio your heater and stuff like that stuff that needs to stay 6 volt and would get harmed by the 12 volt 7 uh, 12 volt coil uh, you're gonna need to swap that out I would go for an internally resisted one and that's because you need to drop the voltage a little bit to the points because the points will burn out faster on 12 volts. So you can go with an internally resisted one or put a ballast resistor in. And all that does is it drops it from about 12 volts to 9 volts to pro prolong the life of your points. Now, number eight, you're going to need a horn relay. Well, this is debatable. I needed a horn relay anyway, so I got a 12 volt horn relay. But from what I understand, the stock one should work just fine. So it's really up to you guys nine bulbs you're going to need to switch out all of them the dome the dash headlights taillights blinkers if you have them everything needs to be 12 volt and then also <clears throat> i'm going to include links to wiring diagrams now they're going to be helpful to understand what you're looking at and what wires go where and i've kind of highlighted the ones that we'll be working with but also in case when you're doing it, you run across something you're not sure about, you can always come in here. It's always a good idea when doing electrical in a vehicle to familiarize yourself with these. So this is the Chevy one, and this is the GMC one. And again, I'm going to put links in the description. All right, guys, let's jump, jump over on the truck and actually show you how I did the 12-volt conversion. Okay, guys, welcome underneath the hood. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. Here is the alternator that I have. Now I have an internally resisted one wire alternator. This is a power gen, which means it's just meant to look like the generator and give a stock look. Lucky for me though, it bolts into the stock location. Now, if you're going to get a GM alternator or a standard alternator, you're going to need a bracket for that. Now, upside is there's a ton of aftermarket support for these, so you can find them in a lot of locations. And I think Vintage Auto Garage also has them. I'm not a supporter or affiliate of them. They just happen to have a lot of the equipment necessary for the 12 volt conversions. Now, before we get into all the wiring that I did for it, I wanted to talk about the wiring diagram and what you're going to actually need to do. Okay, what we have here is the generator. And then you have the field and armature wires, which is a 18 gauge for the field, 10 gauge for the armature, and it runs back to the regulator. And then at the battery terminal, we have a 10 gauge wire. One, water, one of those wires come out here to the horn relay, and the other one comes all the way up to here through the ignition switch and to the amp meter. And then from the amp meter over to the starter, from the starter to the battery. So this wire is the path that the charging of the alternator takes. So what we need to do is you come over to the regulator and you take the wires off the battery terminal 
and then you want to splice in a 10 gauge wire and then run that wire out to your new alternator and I'll show you that right now okay guys back underneath the truck and now that's exactly what I did I took the wires off the battery terminal so this is our armature and field wire and what I did was I pulled them off and spliced in a 10 gauge wire and that 10 gauge wire runs all the way down to the alternator then back up here and that's where that horn relay wire comes off and right into here and that's all the wiring you actually need to do it's incredibly simple now I have two splices because I didn't realize I needed this wire to come off here into the horn relay but if I was to do it again I would just splice them all into one location and have the 10 gauge wire run here and one go into the horn relay and now this goes all the way back to the amp meter like we showed you in the wiring diagram and again that's all you have to do now, if you wanted to not have splices in your wires, all you have to do is put a 10 gauge wire on here and then run it all the way back to the amp meter. And that's it. Now, if you have an excite wire on your one wire alternator, which some of them do have, it's usually going to be a white wire hanging off the back. You're going to want to head and grab that, follow this wire all the way back, and then you're going to hook it to the ignition switch. You want that to be key power on. So when you turn the ignition switch on, it should get 12 volts. Another option is to grab it off there, run it up through the wiring harness here to the other side of the ignition wire, because that right there is 12 volts key power. Some people don't like jumping on that, so they'll just take it to the back of the ignition switch, but some people do use that with a lot of success. And that's actually all that you need to do on this side of the truck. Now what we'll do is we'll jump over there and explain that side. Okay, here we are on the other side of the truck, guys. Before we jump into this wiring, let's go ahead and look at the diagram again. Okay, so now we have our 12 volt power going back to the amp meter, and now we have this wire that comes out into the starter. Now what we're gonna do on this side is add a fuse. Again, you wanna do that because you wanna be able to protect your system with the higher amperage that the alternator puts out. And that is exactly what we have here. Now all that I did was I went and found the wire that came off the starter right there. So I took it off and I just cut it back here and I spliced in a fuse. So this is the original wire and that actually went all the way down to the starter. All I did was I take that off, I snipped it back here to make room for the fuse. I added my fuse in and then ran another 10 gauge wire back down to the starter. And that's all we needed to do to make sure that we're protecting the electrical system because you want the fuse for the higher amperage that these alternators put out. <clears throat> and again, when I talked about battery cables, you see what I mean. So I still have the black one because mine was a six volt positive ground system. Now, when we're on this side of the truck, we need to switch out to a 12 volt coil. Now, like I talked about, I got an internally resisted 12 volt coil and show you right here. That means that it has three ohms of resistance. And all that does is it takes the 12 volts coming in turned it into about nine volts coming out before it hits the points and it keeps the stock look. What you can do is get a regular 12 volt coil and then add a ballast resistor and most people usually put it on the firewall over here and that does the same exact thing. Now I'll put a link to this coil down in the description and I do recommend going with this just because you could keep the stock look and honestly I think it's cheaper than having to buy a coil and a ballast resistor. And if you guys believe it or not, that's all that you need to do underneath the hood. It's crazy simple. All the other wiring will be able to handle the 12 volt power that you're gonna be having. Let's go ahead and check on the battery. Then here is our 12 volt battery. Still have the ground strap. Again, here's our black cable, but you just drop that in. Okay. And then last, you come inside the truck, and again, we're gonna talk about using this voltage reducer. Now this voltage reducer will need to go for the gas gauge. You just hook this to the uh, power post or the stud that's on the back of the gas gauge. Then you hook your power wire to here, and then you put this to ground. And I'll put a picture of that right here so you guys can see what it looks like. And then you'll come over here, you're going to need one for the radio. Now this is an aftermarket 12 volt, but if you have the original, you're going to also need one of these. And again, for the heater over here, if you're going to need to reduce the voltage to the heater so you don't burn that out. And honestly, guys, that's it. You'll need to come over here and do the dash bulbs. You'll have to swap all these 
bulbs out. This is for the dash that goes to the gauges. And then you'll have one here. You'll have your dome light bulb, which mine have a really bright LED. The, the um, switch will be fine. You can use it for the uh, 12 volt. You don't need to switch that out at all. And see, the LEDs as they come on. You also have a bulb in there. And again, I'm going to put a list down below in the description so you can know which bulb to use and where. You'll need the tail lights. And headlights. And that's it, guys. All right, guys, and that's actually it. So put in the alternator, wire it in, just the one wire to the battery, and then out the other side, make sure you fuse it. And then get your 12 volt battery in, put your coil set up in or a ballast resistor, get your bulb swapped out, your voltage reducer put in, and you're good to go. It's really that easy. And that's why I want to make this video to show you guys so you guys can go ahead and take on this project by yourselves. And I hope you, you guys found it helpful. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. And please tell me below anything that I could have done different or anything that I missed. And also, Hit that subscribe button because a lot of videos will be coming out. I mean everything. We're going to nut bolt restoration, all the welding, all the patchwork, painting. We're putting a new motor in, and you guys are going to be surprised on what goes in. And also, if you didn't notice when I was doing it, this is a hydromatic truck. So that's going to be a lot, and I can't wait to go into the history on that too. All right, guys. You guys take it easy. See you on the next one.